So I gotta be honest with you. I'm a big fan of tracking calories and macros as a way to learn portion sizes, to get in a calorie deficit, and to lose body fat. But I also know there's no one size fits all solution for getting lean and that probably none of us wanna be using something like MyFitnessPal for the rest of our lives. So if you wanna learn how to lose body fat without tracking your calories, well in this video, I'm gonna share with you four effective ways to do exactly that. So without any further ado, let's dive into tip number one, which is eat your meals until you're no longer hungry as opposed to eating until you're completely full. At first glance, this habit sounds too simple to be effective, but it can actually make a really big difference. Since most people, if they paid attention to satiety, could reduce their intake by 10, 15, 20% per meal without really compromising on fullness. And the thing is, most of us grew up with that mentality of cleaning your plate. And then over time, we learn to disregard signals of satiety and we treat eating a meal as another task that has to be completed. And then as we get older, portions get progressively larger and we still have that mentality of cleaning the plate, so we often end up eating more than we actually need. So one way to find that balance is to eat until you're no longer hungry and then on top of that, prioritize whole healthy unprocessed foods and a high protein intake and that combination will get a lot of people into a calorie deficit and have them lose body fat without tracking a single calorie. Now building on this, the second tip that I have for you is learn to recognize when you're truly hungry. For example, if you woke up in the morning and you're not really hungry, great, there's no reason to eat. Too many people spend their calories when they're not really hungry. It's okay to fast for a few hours and then have your meal. It's also okay that if you're feeling a little bit hungry, to wait to have a proper meal instead of eating random food. And if you crave some calorie dense street, ask yourself, would I wanna have some cottage cheese instead? Or a bowl of salad with some lean chicken breast? If the answer is no, well, you're not really hungry, you just want a dopamine hit. For that, you can hit the like button on my videos, which is zero calories and it makes me happy. And most people don't realize how these small snacks between meals and after dinner can quickly add up. You could be doing everything else right with your meals, but those extra five to 600 calories of small snacks you're having throughout the day is literally the difference between you staying stuck at your current body fat percentage versus getting leaner. Now, the third tip that's gonna help you lose body fat without tracking calories is to stop eating on autopilot. We're increasingly becoming a distracted society and a lot of people are multitasking and doing all of that while they're eating. And we know that if you're using your smartphone, if you're being distracted during your meals, that it can lead to an increase in calories. And some studies suggest about 15% more calories being consumed, which can definitely make a really big difference. We also know from research when people slow down their eating and they start paying attention to food, that they experience greater satiety and it's much easier for them to control overall food intake. And I personally consider myself a quote unquote fast eater and this is definitely something I had to work on. And I've also noticed an improved relationship with food ever since I stopped eating on autopilot and I started paying attention. It definitely helped me enjoy food a lot more and I'm not overeating. And so if you're not sure where to start with this, here's what I suggest. First, aim to remove as many distractions as you can while you're eating, or at the very least, start paying attention to how fast you're eating and then slow down if necessary. Second, while you're having your meals, at about 70% in, take a break. See what you had and whether you're still hungry. This short break allows you to insert some mindfulness there and will prevent you from just wolfing through your meals. And if this sounds really hard to do with your style of eating, well, that's a sign that you really need to do it. And a quick tip here, I suggest starting your meals by eating your protein first. So if you do hit that 70% mark and you're full, at least you had the most important nutrient for your body composition. And speaking of breaks, I recommend taking a 15 minute break before you go for a second serving to give your brain a chance to register whether you're still hungry or you're full but you're eating because you can. Now the fourth tip that's going to help you get lean without tracking calories is something I call the set and forget method. And this will require you to do a little bit of meal planning but it's highly effective and something that I'm a really big fan of. So let's say you have 2000 or 2100 calories as your daily target intake to reach your goal. Well, with that 2000 calorie intake, you can get there by reactively tracking your food throughout the day, you can put stuff on the kitchen scale, or you can have six, seven predefined meals that are in the 500 to 700 calorie range that get you enough protein 
and then just rotate those meals. It becomes as simple as putting pieces of the puzzle together. And simplicity beats complexity when it comes to consistency. And you don't have to track anything anymore because all this is pre-measured. You know all the ingredients, you have all the recipes, and you actually get better at preparing these meals over time. You can even do a meal prep for a whole week. So it keeps things very straightforward. And it also makes it much easier to make adjustments if you see that the weight on the scale isn't going down after a few weeks because you're the one who knows the portions and you can just readjust your meals a little bit and you're gonna be good to go. And the same method doesn't just work for meals at home. It also works for eating out. For eating out, my recommendation is to do a bit of research and create a list of macro-friendly restaurants in your area where you have predefined options for about 1,000 to 1,500 calories. Some of my personal favorites are traditional Japanese sushi places. I like the food and I know if I get a bunch of nigiris and some sashimis that ingredients are pretty simple, there's not much of hidden oils or sugars, and I can easily fit that into my budget. I've done my research, I know exactly how much I can order, so if I have a dinner where I want to eat 1,200 calories, calories of sushi, I can do one of my templates for meal one, get about five, 600 calories, do a protein shake in the afternoon and do sushi in the evening and enjoy that because I've done my homework. I don't have to stress about it. And the key to this approach is to do the work up front to create a system. And then it becomes a one and done because once you have a system, the system continues working for you. You're no longer winging it with your diet. You have your predefined food choices. You know what options to go for. You're not just reactively tracking things and worrying about it. And remember, all these tips here are useless until you apply them. So take the information from this video, try it out for yourself, and I promise you, you will see results. The other thing that's gonna help you see results is making sure to hit that subscribe button below and the notifications with the bell icon. Details of coaching if you wanna work with me are in the description below. Also leaving another video here for you at the end that's gonna really help you in your journey, so check it out, and I'm gonna see you right there.